Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this very important project, really. <clears throat> we are intensivists and ER physician, even an anesthetist. <clears throat> we are facing a critically ill patient in the ER. This patient probably in bad shape uh, with respiratory distress, hemodynamic unstable, and we are go. We, we need to proceed for intubation for this patient, crash intubation. Uh, while preparing for intubation and stabilizing the airway breathing, do we need to do critical care ultrasound, basic critical care ultrasound for intubation in critical ill patient in ER? We used to, to do it really in our resuscitation room in all patients. I used to do it in all patients for a lot of years. Because this patient, critically ill patient, the emergency room, really need to know what's going on as regard his physiology. Because connecting the patient to mechanical ventilation, starting by anesthesia, intubation, connected to post pressure ventilation, this all again is the physiology in this type of patient. This type of patient need a sympathetic system to maintain life, sympathetic surge to maintain life. Giving anesthesia to this patient will abort the sympathetic nervous system, which is very important in this situation. This patient who is gasping for breath, who is hypotension, he need to suck blood by deep breath, negative pressure in the chest to suck blood in the, to the heart. But putting on post pressure ventilation will be detrimental, especially in cases like obstructive shock, pulmonary embolism, <coughs> pneumothorax, bricardial tabunate. All these will be detrimental to connect to post pressure ventilation because he needs negative chest pressure to suck the blood. Why I'm talking about this project now? Let us see this case. I received a call phone from the station room by the need for the need of intubation. The patient was an elderly female, 76 years old, admitted to resuscitation room because of aspiration pneumonia. She received antibiotic nebulization, chest physiotherapy, but her oxygen saturation was deteriorating. So they asked for intubation. When we saw the patient, she was disoriented with RAS scale minus three, hemodynamic blood pressure 100 over 60, heart rate 120 per minute, sinus without any tropes, respiratory rate 35, oxygen saturation 85, on 15 liter non breathing mass. This patient is tachypneic on high, fly, uh, high flow oxygen, saturation borderline, blood pressure borderline. She needs support, definitely she needs support. Uh, heart examination, unremarkable. She's examination, diminished with sound, right side, abdomen, soft legs. In all critical new patient in ER, we used to assess the patient before intubation by critical care ultrasound to know what is the physiology of this patient to adjust myself, adjust my medication, adjust my ventilation for this physiology. It's a quick, non-invasive, safe, and help a lot for the next steps. Let us see. We started critical care ultrasound for this patient. First, inferior vena cava, very narrow, totally collapsing inferior vena cava. So, in no time, we ordered to give a bolus of IV fluids. We ask the beauty nurse, please give a bolus of saline, give five, 500 cc saline while I am examining the patient. Second, we go to the heart. This four chamber view, as you see here, right ventricle is kissing because of dehydration, moving wheel up and down, that's good. But as you see here, this left ventricle, almost a kinetic apex, hypokinetic septum, active lateral bar, could be stress novice, which is common in this type of patient, could be anterior septal myocardial infarction, but we can order to prepare dopamine infusion before giving sedation to this patient. So, in no time, we know what are we going to manage for this patient. Patient is dry, will give bolus of IV fluids, patient is, has heart failure, low ejection fraction left side, we need to support by troops before giving anesthesia. Remember, patient has right side diminished breath sound. This is a right lung. You see here, no sliding. This is a rib, rib shadow. This is a pleura, pleural line, no sliding. This is humping. 
This is movement up and down of the pleura, not sliding. This is up and down movement because of the stress, because of accessory muscle contraction and the tension of the pleura, but no sliding at all. Let us see, comparing by, by the left side. This is the right side, no sliding. This is the left side, very good sliding. So this patient has no sliding in the right side. No sliding is not specific for pneumothorax, but sensitive, okay? But can happen in other pathology. Let us see what is the specific for pneumothorax in lung side. This is what's called lung point, which is almost 100% specific for pneumothorax. This is the rib, the rib shadow. This is underneath rib. This is the pleura. Here is the pleura, no sliding. But here, there is sliding. Sliding, no sliding. Sliding, no sliding. So, now, right side, we have absence of sliding and lung point on the right side. What else? We have barcode sign on the right side. You see, all, all is the C, no sure here, because all is static, no movement at all, no movement of the lung because of pneumothorax, so will appear as barcode. So, barcode, absent sliding, and lung, bar, lung point, that means the patient has right side pneumothorax. So, we insert right side CT tube before intubation, because inserting, uh, inserting intercal tube and putting the bus of mechanical ventilation in this situation, you can induce tension pneumothorax for this patient. So it's very important to insert chest tube before intubation. It's very important for this patient to give fluid before intubation. It's very important to prepare in the troops before intubation. You did three very important procedures before intubating your patient. This is the value of critical care ultrasound before intubation, which is a basic uh, critical care ultrasound. This is a patient, lung pneumothorax, and this is the chest tube. After inserting chest tube, this is another value of critical care ultrasound. After inserting chest tube, auto saturation increased to 98. It increased a lot for this patient, improved a lot with chest tube, but dropped again to 91 on high flow oxygen before intubation. Repeating lung ultrasound, we find B line, which is a pulmonary edema. Decompression pulmonary edema happened for this patient because he has heart failure and decompression of the pleura. Both can increase the hydrostatic pressures and may exist by more edema. I think this is the time and safe time and good time and the appropriate time to start mechanical ventilation of this patient. At the end, now we sedate the patient and we connect to mechanical ventilation under cover of the foot safely. And nothing happened during intubation and the mechanical ventilation of this patient as regards hemodynamics, okay? The question is here, do we need to do critical care ultrasound before intubation in newly critically ill patient in RR? I will let you to answer this, and I would be happy to receive your comment and see you again in another project. Thank you a lot for appreciated uh, listening. Bye-bye.